Okay, so one of the main tasks that you've got to do over the next week is to compile some notes on research methods. Now, as you can see, I've drawn up a table. Now, this is only part of a table. On the left-hand side, you can see the, um, the methods that we're going to be looking at. And we have to define these methods. We also need to look at some of the strengths of the methods. And in yellow, I've put something called key term. Now, I'm going to explain that later, but this is really important that you're able to understand key terms. And then we're going to look at weaknesses. And again, key terms. And we're going to look at some of the examples of the studies that we've looked at in education and youth, but also some new ones that you could use for examples in your work. And we've also got to understand what kinds of sociologists really like these certain methods. So these are called theoretical approaches. So you can see that you could make a table like this and you need several. So going on to the next slide. So you can see we've got unstructured interviews, focus groups, longitudinal studies, and we've also got observations. Okay. Now you could do it like that, or you could just write notes in your normal sort of uh, on file paper. So what the main things you need to do, you need to do a definition. You need to be able to put two strengths, two weaknesses. You've got to be able to say who they're liked by and an example. So over the next week, this is your task to make notes on all of these things. Okay, so the next bit that we've got to look at in this table is how to define these methods um, that we've got written down. And this is quite easy. I think you'll be able to have a guess at this. So what I've done is I've put some definitions here and I want you to sort them out into that first column, please. So that you've got a clear definition for each method. Okay, so pause again. Okay, the next task is one that I think that you can do and work out. Strengths and weaknesses of the methods. Okay, for each method, you need to be able to understand two strengths and two weaknesses. So these are disadvantages and advantages to these methods. But the key thing that you've got to be able to do is to use those golden key terms to explain why they are a strength or a weakness. So let's have a look at unstructured interviews. And you know an unstructured interview is a series of questions um, that's asked by a researcher to a participant. There's no particular order. The researcher can add to those questions as they go along. And it's pretty much a conversation. So these unstructured interviews we need to say what a feature is. So a participant can answer in their own words so they can clearly explain their situation. So can you see that that then would lead to, well, it gives valid data because they can answer in their own words, they can give a true and accurate reflection of their social situation. Let's look at a weakness then. So unstructured interviews. Yeah, they're very conversational, but can you imagine all that data that's being collected? So what we can say in the middle here is they can be very hard to analyze due to the conversational nature of the content. What I might pick up as a theme uh, in terms of that interview, deck might not. So there's no consistency. So it leads to unreliable, as they're hard to replicate or to repeat. So I want you to look carefully at the way that these points are strung together. And the reason why we need to have all these three elements, so what something is, a feature of it, and its key term, is because you need to be able to write something that's um, similar to what I've written at the bottom of the, of the slide. 
So we need to be able to write things like this in your paragraphs. So one weakness of unstructured interviews is that they can be very difficult to analyse. This is because participants <coughs> get to answer at length in their own words. This makes the method unreliable. Reliability refers to the consistency of data and how replicable it is. Okay, so you've got quite a lot of work to do now on your strengths and weaknesses of the method. And the place that I want you to go to collect this information is a really good website. It's designed for your specification. Um, and there is a hyperlink here to take you to this area. Okay, and what you need to do is you need to make sure that down in this bottom left hand corner that you're on English rather than Welsh. And then what you'll need to do is to go up to this little symbol at the top that has the lines on it. And you'll have to go through each method. So questionnaires, interviews, observations, and make sure you're recording a couple of strengths and a couple of weaknesses and try and put in that key term. Now sometimes the key term will be there, sometimes you'll need to use your own brain to work that one out. So you need to go there now and do a fair bit of work. This should take you quite some time. So pause. Okay, so your notes so far should look like this. You should have gone through and defined all the methods. You should have two strengths for each method, linking to key terms. You should have two weaknesses for each method, linking to the key terms. We haven't done studies yet, so that's that would be something that we do next week. But I'd like you to try now to put in the theoretical approach that you think uh, would would choose this kind of method. So I'm hoping that you can see that using a closed question questionnaire is something that would probably be liked by positivists because you're going to get quantitative data and you're going to get it quite easily so you can use large samples and get representative samples. So have a go at this now, filling in that last column liked by